Hey everyone, my name is Benji. Welcome to my channel. Here I talk about my journey in learning PCB design and electronics through building a modular synthesizer system. In this video, I'll talk about part of making that has really changed how I do my prototypes, and that's 3D printing. But first, let me give you a little background on how I've been doing things before I got my first printer. When I started building synth modules, I used these 2020 profile aluminum rails. I drilled holes through these acrylic sheets and used them as my front panels. I really like how they look. However, when I started designing open source PCBs, I quickly realized that my rails didn't play well with standard Euro rack modules. Most boards wouldn't fit through the thicker 2020 aluminum extrusions. This made me decide to finally use standard rails. The biggest challenge I faced after the switch was that I needed a way to place these mounting holes accurately. I had too little clearance and wiggle room, and the slippery acrylic panels didn't help. By this time, I've already bought my first 3D printer, so so I thought I'd use that to make my panels. To do so, I used OpenSCAD. It's a 3D design software that's code-centric. Having a software development background myself, I naturally gravitated towards that workflow. Eurorack panels can be as simple as drawing a cuboid and subtracting cylinders from it. However, 3D printed plastic can be a bit flimsy when printed thin. Most components like jacks can't go through thicker materials. So I needed to make the panels a, a bit thin, which in turn made them flimsy. So I decided to go with thicker panels, with these indentations for each component at the back. This way, I can still make the panels thick enough to minimize the flex while still accommodating standard components. After a couple of prototypes, I realized that because of the beauty of programming, of course, you can make things reusable. To help myself make panels faster, I, I turned this into a library called the Europe Panel Maker. I also made it open source, so you can find it on my GitHub. With this, I can just import the library, define a couple of variables like the width of the module, where the pots go, where the jacks go, and then call the generate panel function. I can then render the file and then export it as STL by pressing F7. From there, I can just do my regular workflow for 3D printing. I load the STL file into Cura, export the G-code, and then queue it for printing. A standard 4HP panel would cost around 7 grams of filament, which I think isn't too bad. After about an hour, I get a pretty decent Eurorack panel for my quick prototype. If you don't have a printer at home, I, th I think this is the perfect time to tell you about the sponsor of this video, PCBWay. I typically use them for my Eurorack module PCBs, but they also have a 3D printing service. You can upload your STL files onto their site and order the panels from them. 5 4 HP panels would cost only $6 to print in resin. Go to pcbway.com to check them out. I'll also include a link in the description. Now, back to the project. I usually just mount my boards by the wires. I use solid ground wire, so they're, they're good enough for personal use. I also found that this works great with point-to-point -point builds as well. I'm also beginning to like this method the most because of how compact the builds get and also how cheaper they become. I have plenty of examples for the panels in my GitHub repository. I always try to upload my prototype builds so you can have something to jump off of. Let me know if you've tried it. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you again in the next video.
Thank you.